Have you ever wondered about the secret forces shaping history's most infamous figures? Enter the peculiar world of Theodore Morel, Adolf Hitler's personal physician. Imagine a doctor whose unconventional methods and mysterious concoctions influenced one of the most notorious leaders in history. This narrative unveils Morel's enigmatic life and his peculiar role in the shadows of the Third Reich. What secrets did his syringes hold? Let's delve into a story where medicine intertwines with the corridors of power. The Enigmatic Dr. Morel. The story of Theodore Morel, Adolf Hitler's personal doctor, is as fascinating as it is peculiar. Born in 1886, Morel grew up in a world far removed from the grandeur and horrors of the Third Reich. His early life was unremarkable, typical of a middle-class German upbringing. He pursued medicine with a passion that would later define his controversial career. By the time he crossed paths with Hitler, Morel had established himself as a successful but unconventional practitioner in Berlin. The doctor's clinic, nestled in the prestigious avenue of Kurfürstendamm, was no ordinary medical establishment. Founded in the early 1920s, it quickly gained a reputation for unconventional and effective treatments. Morel's methods were unorthodox, to say the least. He was known to use treatments that were, at times, considered radical and even bizarre by his contemporaries. This approach won him a clientele that included princes, movie stars, and the wealthy elite of Berlin. They sought his miracle cures and unconventional treatments, a testament to Morel's rising fame and influence. However, Morel's life took a dramatic turn in 1933. The rise of Hitler and the National Socialists threatened to upend his lucrative practice. Many of his clients were Jewish, and Morel himself, with his rotund face, mostly bald head, and small round glasses, didn't fit the Aryan ideal of the new regime. In a twist of fate, or perhaps opportunism, Morel joined the Nazi party. This decision marked the beginning of his ascent to the inner circles of Nazi power. The pivotal moment in Morel's life came in 1936. Heinrich Hoffmann, Hitler's personal photographer, who had been successfully treated by Morel for a severe case of gonorrhea, sang praises of the doctor to Hitler. Intrigued, Hitler, who was suffering from stomach cramps and a skin condition, agreed to meet Morel. The doctor suggested a then-novel drug called Mutaflor. The results were astonishing. Hitler's symptoms rapidly diminished. Impressed, Hitler appointed Morel as his personal physician in 1937, a role Morel would hold until the dictator's final days. Over the years, Morel's influence over Hitler grew exponentially. He administered a bizarre cocktail of drugs, over 3,000 injections of some 70 different medications throughout their relationship. These ranged from common vitamins to more exotic substances like extracts from animal glands. It wasn't just the quantity, but the diversity of treatments that was staggering. Morel's journal, a meticulous record of these treatments, reveals a pharmacopoeia that ranged from the benign to the toxic. Critics of the time and historians later dubbed Morel Der Reichspritzenmeister, the Reich Injection Master, for his liberal use of injections. His methods raised eyebrows, but his proximity to Hitler shielded him from overt criticism within the Nazi hierarchy. However, this didn't stop whispers about his competence and the actual effectiveness of his treatments. Morel's story is not just about a doctor and his patient. It's about how an individual can rise to prominence through opportunism and intrigue. His journey from a simple Berlin clinic to the epicenter of Nazi power speaks volumes about the times he lived in. But was he merely a physician doing his best to treat a patient? Or was he an opportunist who exploited his position for personal gain. This chapter of history raises many questions. What drove Morel to adopt such unconventional methods? How did he manage to gain the trust of one of history's most infamous figures? And most intriguingly, what impact, if any, did his treatments have on Hitler's health and decision-making? As we explore the life of Theodore Morel, we find ourselves delving into a tale that blurs the lines between medicine and manipulation, healing, and harm. An unlikely meeting, 
and rise to power. In the tapestry of history, there are moments where the threads of fate intertwine in the most unexpected ways. The meeting of Theodore Morel and Adolf Hitler was one such moment, a convergence that would significantly impact both their lives and, arguably, the course of history. The year was 1936, and Morel's path crossed with Heinrich Hoffmann, Hitler's personal photographer who was suffering from a severe case of gonorrhea. Morel's unconventional treatment worked wonders, leaving Hoffman profoundly impressed. It was Hoffman's enthusiastic praise that first brought Morel to Hitler's attention. Hitler, at that time, was grappling with debilitating stomach pains and a troublesome skin condition. Traditional treatments had failed to alleviate his suffering. Enter Morel, with his reputation for miraculous cures and a flair for the unconventional. During their first encounter, Morel suggested Mutaflor, a treatment derived from bacteria found in the feces of a soldier, which, to Hitler's amazement, quickly alleviated his symptoms. The success of this treatment marked the beginning of Morel's journey as the personal physician of the Führer. In 1937, he was officially appointed to this role, a position that would see him by Hitler's side almost constantly for the next eight years. Morel's ascent was meteoric. From a somewhat obscure doctor, he became one of the most powerful figures in the Third Reich, wielding significant influence due to his close proximity to Hitler. As Hitler's physician, Morel's role extended far beyond that of a traditional doctor. He was a confidant, an advisor, and, as some would argue, an enabler. His treatment regimen for Hitler was nothing short of extraordinary. It included a bewildering array of substances, vitamins, hormones, opiates, amphetamines, and even animal extracts. This pharmacological barrage was administered through daily injections and pills, a practice that earned Morel the nickname Reich Injection Master. Morel's influence extended into Hitler's daily life in other ways as well. He advised on diet, exercise, and even personal care. His control over Hitler's health care was almost absolute, and few dared to question his methods or the efficacy of his treatments. This level of influence was unprecedented for a physician in the political arena. However, Morel's rise to power was not without its challenges. His unconventional methods and the mysterious concoctions he administered were a source of concern and ridicule among other Nazi officials. High-ranking members like Hermann Göring viewed him with suspicion and disdain, mocking him behind his back. Eva Braun, Hitler's companion, was repelled by Morel's lack of personal hygiene and his intrusive manner. Despite these challenges, Morel's position remained secure, protected by Hitler's unwavering trust in him. This trust was not unfounded, at least in Hitler's eyes. Morel's treatments seemed to provide relief, at least temporarily, from Hitler's various ailments. Whether it was digestive problems, skin conditions, or later, the tremendous stress and physical deterioration brought on by the war, Morel always had a solution, however unconventional. This reliance on Morel's treatments possibly played a role in shaping Hitler's state of mind and decision-making, particularly as the war progressed and the pressure mounted. The relationship between Morel and Hitler was complex. It wasn't just doctor-patient, it was a symbiosis where each fed into the other's needs. Morel needed the prestige and power that came with being the Führer's personal physician, while Hitler needed the relief and reassurance that Morel's treatments seemingly provided. This dynamic was crucial in maintaining Morel's position in the inner circle of the Third Reich. As the war intensified and the tide turned against Germany, Morel's role became even more significant. His treatments became more frequent and more desperate as Hitler's health and mental state deteriorated. The once all-powerful Führer was now increasingly dependent on his doctor's injections and pills to function. Morel's story is not just a tale of a doctor and his famous patient. It is a study in the intoxication of power and the moral compromises made in its pursuit. His unlikely rise from a Berlin clinic to the upper echelons of Nazi Germany serves as a reminder of how chance encounters can alter the course of lives and, indeed, history. In Morel's case, his meeting with Hitler propelled him into a world of power, intrigue, and ultimately, infamy.
a concoction of treatments. In the shadowy corridors of Nazi power, Theodore Morel stood out not for his political acumen, but for his medical bag of tricks. As Adolf Hitler's personal physician, Morel embarked on a medical odyssey that was as controversial as it was bizarre, administering an astonishing array of treatments to the Fuhrer. This chapter delves into the concoction of treatments Morel used, revealing a strange blend of medicine and mystery that characterized his approach. At the heart of Morel's treatment regimen was a philosophy that veered sharply from conventional medical practice. He had an affinity for experimental and unorthodox treatments, which he liberally administered to Hitler. The range of substances injected or given to Hitler is staggering and speaks volumes about the era's medical understanding and Morel's peculiar methods. One of the most notorious of these substances was a drug called pervitine, a form of methamphetamine. Initially developed as a stimulant, pervitine was widely used by German soldiers to enhance alertness and endurance. In Hitler's case, Morel used it to boost energy and mood. The use of such a potent stimulant raises questions about its impact on Hitler's mental state, particularly during critical periods of decision-making. Morel also regularly administered injections of vitamins, hormones, and even animal extracts to Hitler. One of the more outlandish treatments involved an extract from the glands of bulls, believed to enhance vigor and vitality. Such treatments were not only unconventional, but also indicative of the experimental nature of medicine at the time, especially in the realm of endocrinology. In addition to these, Morel prescribed a variety of other drugs for specific ailments. For digestive issues, he used mutaflor, and for Hitler's notorious flatulence, he prescribed a cocktail of drugs, including some that contained strychnine, a known poison. When Hitler suffered from insomnia, Morel turned to sedatives like barbiturates, which were also used to euthanize pets at the time. This delicate balancing act between stimulants and sedatives created a pharmacological roller coaster that likely had profound effects on Hitler's physical and mental health. The sheer number of drugs and the frequency of their administration were extraordinary. Morel kept meticulous records in his diaries, detailing over 70 different medications given in the form of thousands of injections and pills throughout their time together. This medical regime was not just a reflection of Morel's unconventional approach, but also of the trust Hitler placed in him. It also points to a deeper issue. Hitler's increasing dependence on these treatments as the war progressed and his health deteriorated. This dependence on Morel's treatments was a double-edged sword. While it provided temporary relief, it also made Hitler increasingly reliant on his physician. This reliance gave Morel an unprecedented level of influence over the Fuhrer, but it also raised questions about the ethical implications of his medical practices. Morel's approach was not just about treating physical ailments. It was about maintaining Hitler's ability to lead, often under immense physical and psychological strain. The impact of these treatments on Hitler's decision-making, particularly during critical moments of the war, has been a subject of much debate among historians. Some argue that the cocktail of drugs could have altered Hitler's mental state, affecting his judgment and contributing to the erratic and often irrational decisions that characterized the latter part of his rule. Others, however, contend that while the drugs may have impacted his physical health, they did not fundamentally change his personality or decision-making processes. Morel's concoction of treatments also reflected the medical practices of the time, where the boundaries of ethical medical treatment were often blurred, especially in the context of the Third Reich. This era saw a confluence of scientific exploration and moral ambiguity, with doctors like Morel operating in a gray area where the lines between treatment and experimentation were often indistinct. Influence on history? In the annals of history, few relationships between a leader and his physician have been as scrutinized and speculated upon as that of Adolf Hitler and Theodore Morel. The cocktail of drugs administered by Morel to Hitler has stirred debate among historians and medical professionals alike. Did Morel's treatments influence the course of history by altering Hitler's physical and mental state? To explore this question, one must first consider the nature of the drugs Morel prescribed. 
The regimen included stimulants like methamphetamine, sedatives, hormones, and various other substances, each with potential side effects that could affect mood, cognitive function, and decision-making. Given the pivotal role Hitler played in directing Nazi Germany's military and political strategies, the impact of these drugs cannot be overlooked. The use of pervitin, a potent form of methamphetamine, is particularly noteworthy. Commonly used by soldiers to enhance alertness, its effects on Hitler could have included heightened energy and a sense of invincibility, potentially exacerbating his already aggressive and risk-taking behaviors. On the flip side, the sedatives used to counteract insomnia might have dulled his cognitive abilities and slowed his reaction times at critical moments. Morell's treatments coincided with some of the most crucial and disastrous decisions of Hitler's regime, including the invasion of the Soviet Union and the declaration of war on the United States. Some historians argue that the drug regimen contributed to a decline in Hitler's health, both physical and mental, which in turn influenced these fateful decisions. The theory posits that as the war progressed, Hitler became increasingly erratic, paranoid, and detached from reality, symptoms that could be attributed to the long-term effects of Morell's drug cocktail. However, attributing Hitler's strategic blunders and the eventual downfall of the Third Reich solely to his medical treatment oversimplifies a complex web of historical events. Hitler's ideology, personal beliefs, and the broader context of the war played significant roles in his decision-making. Moreover, many of Hitler's fundamental personality traits and ideological convictions were established long before Morell entered his life. It is also important to consider the medical context of the time. The 1930s and 1940s were a period of medical experimentation, with limited understanding of the long-term effects of many drugs. Morell, like many doctors of his era, operated in an environment where the boundaries of medical ethics were often blurred, especially in Nazi Germany. This context does not excuse Morell's actions, but provides a backdrop against which they can be understood. From a psychological perspective, the relationship between Hitler and Morell was complex. Hitler's dependence on Morell went beyond the physical. It was psychological and emotional. Morell provided a sense of security and well-being, which Hitler desperately sought, especially as the war turned against Germany. This dependence, while it gave Morell significant influence, also placed him in a precarious position, having to constantly find ways to alleviate Hitler's ailments and maintain his favor. The impact of Morell's treatments on the broader course of the war is a matter of ongoing debate. While it is tempting to draw direct correlations between Hitler's drug use and specific military decisions, the reality is likely more nuanced. The drugs may have exacerbated existing traits or contributed to physical and mental decline, but they were just one factor in a complex interplay of personal, political, and military dynamics. The Downfall of an Empire and a Physician as the Third Reich crumbled under the relentless advance of Allied forces, the fate of Adolf Hitler and his personal physician, Theodor Morell, became inexorably intertwined with the downfall of an empire. This chapter examines the final days of the Nazi regime and the denouement of the peculiar relationship between Hitler and Morell, set against the backdrop of a world at war. By the early months of 1945, the situation for Nazi Germany had grown increasingly dire. The Allies were closing in, and Hitler, ensconced in his bunker in Berlin, was a shadow of his former self. His physical and mental health had deteriorated, a decline that some attribute at least in part to the years of heavy medication prescribed by Morell. As the Third Reich teetered on the brink of collapse, so too did the health of its Führer, mirroring the impending doom that awaited both. Morell, ever the loyal physician, continued his regimen of treatments, despite the rapidly changing circumstances. His diaries from this period reveal a frantic effort to maintain Hitler's health, with a mix of stimulants, sedatives, and other medications administered in a vain attempt to keep the Nazi leader functioning. The once powerful doctor, who had held sway over the health of the most feared man in Europe, was now struggling to stave off the inevitable. 
The relationship between Hitler and Morel, which had been built on a foundation of dependency and trust, began to show cracks as the end neared. The Führer, increasingly paranoid and erratic, began to lose faith in his physician's ability to treat him. The turning point came on April 21, 1945, when Hitler, suspecting that Morel was trying to poison him or incapacitate him to be taken to Bavaria, dismissed him from the bunker. It was a dramatic fall from grace for Morel, who had once been one of the few people Hitler trusted implicitly. As Morel left the bunker, his future uncertain and his reputation in tatters, Hitler's final days were playing out in a similar vein of despair and defeat. The Führer, once the absolute ruler of Nazi Germany, was now a broken man, holed up in a bunker, making futile military orders and preparing for his end. The parallel between the fates of Hitler and Morel is striking. Both men, in their own ways, were undone by the very things that had brought them together, power, dependence, and the illusion of control. Morel's life post-Nazi Germany was a stark contrast to his years in power. He was captured by American forces and interrogated, suspected of being complicit in Nazi war crimes. Although he was never formally charged and was eventually released, his health, like that of his former patient, had deteriorated significantly. The doctor who had once been at the pinnacle of power in Nazi Germany died in 1948, largely forgotten and disgraced a casualty of the very regime he had served. The downfall of Morel and Hitler is a poignant reminder of the transience of power and the fickle nature of fate. Morel, who had risen to prominence through his association with Hitler, found his fortunes irrevocably tied to those of the Nazi leader. His story is a cautionary tale about the dangers of aligning one's destiny too closely with that of another, particularly a figure as destructive and doomed as Hitler. In the annals of history, the downfall of the Third Reich is a watershed moment, marking the end of one of the darkest chapters in human history. The demise of Morel, though less significant in the grand scheme of things, is nevertheless a part of this narrative. His story is a side note to the larger tragedy of World War II, a personal drama that played out in the shadows of a much greater catastrophe. Historical Perspective and Legacy the story of Theodor Morel, Adolf Hitler's personal physician, sits at a curious intersection of history, ethics, and medicine. In the years since the fall of the Third Reich, historians, medical professionals, and the public have grappled with Morel's legacy, trying to understand his role within the Nazi regime and the impact of his medical practices on one of history's most notorious figures. From a historical perspective, Morel is an enigmatic figure. He was neither a prominent Nazi ideologue nor a military strategist. Instead, he was a physician who found himself in the inner circle of Nazi power, wielding influence not through political prowess, but through his medical treatments. His story offers a unique lens into the daily life of Adolf Hitler, providing insights into the dictator's health, his dependence on drugs, and how this may have affected his state of mind and decision-making. Morel's medical practices reflected the experimental nature of medicine at the time, particularly in Nazi Germany, where there was a fascination with new treatments and a willingness to push the boundaries of medical ethics. Morel's use of a wide array of drugs, including amphetamines, barbiturates, and animal extracts, was a part of this broader context. However, it also raises questions about the ethical responsibilities of a physician especially when the patient is a figure like Hitler. The legacy of Morel is also entangled with the broader moral dilemmas faced by those who served the Nazi regime. His case forces us to confront uncomfortable questions about complicity, the abuse of medical knowledge, and the role of personal ambition in the face of evil. Morel, for all his medical expertise, chose to serve a dictator, and in doing so, became a part of the machinery of the Third Reich. This decision has left a stain on his legacy, overshadowing his medical accomplishments. In the post-war period, Morel's treatments of Hitler have been scrutinized for their possible impact on historical events. Some argue that Morel's drug regimen may have exacerbated Hitler's physical and mental decline, influencing key decisions during the war. 
Others caution against overestimating Morel's influence, noting that Hitler's decision-making was shaped by a complex interplay of ideology, circumstance, and personality traits that predated his association with Morel. Morel's story is also a reminder of the dangers of unchecked power, both for those who wield it and those who are drawn into its orbit. As Hitler's physician, Morel had unprecedented access and influence, but he also found himself trapped by his own ambition and the demands of his patient. His willingness to administer risky treatments and his failure to challenge Hitler's decisions speak to the moral corruption that can occur when a physician becomes too closely aligned with power. In terms of legacy, Morel remains a controversial figure. To some, he is a symbol of the moral compromises made by those who served the Nazi regime. To others, he is a cautionary tale of a medical professional who lost his ethical compass in the pursuit of personal gain and prestige. His story is a complex tapestry of ambition, medicine, and moral ambiguity, set against the backdrop of one of the darkest periods in human history. Furthermore, Morel's relationship with Hitler adds an intriguing layer to our understanding of the dictator. It provides a humanizing glimpse into Hitler's vulnerabilities, his health problems, his fears, and his dependence on medical treatment. This perspective does not elicit sympathy, but rather adds depth to our understanding of Hitler as a historical figure.